In this episode, you'll learn how to accept payments using Link with Stripe on your own custom Stripe Elements payment form. Link with Stripe is a new option that allows your customers to remember their payment details for faster checkout next time. Customers have these Link accounts where they store their billing information like their email address, shipping addresses, and even payment details like cards and bank accounts. When a customer visits a new business that accepts Link, they only need to authenticate with their one-time password for frictionless checkout. While Link is already available in Stripe Checkout, we're really excited to announce a beta where you can offer Link to your customers when they're going through payment pages on your own application. All right, let's see how we can integrate Link. So we're inside of VS Code. We're gonna head over to the Stripe for VS Code extension, scroll down to samples and say, start with a Stripe sample. We'll use the accept a payment sample today. We're gonna use the payment element integration with HTML on the front end, Ruby on the back end, and we'll give this a name, accept payment with link. We'll pick a repo that we wanna clone that sample down into and accept that this is going to be downloaded. We'll open that in the same window and get to work. The very first thing we wanna do is just start up our server and see what this sample gives us straight out of the box. So I'll open up the terminal, CD into the server directory and fire up the server with Ruby server. Let's head over to the browser and take a look at localhost 4242. Here you can see the payment element is being rendered. We have several different payment method types that are available, including bank contact, EPS, and card. By default, this sample uses euros for the currency on the payment intent. However, Link with Stripe currently only supports USD. So we're gonna see a little bit of a different list of payment method types when we come back in a moment. Let's take a look at how this integration works. On the server side, we have a create payment intent endpoint where we make an API call to create a payment intent and then we pass its client secret back to the client. On the front end, we have a little bit of HTML. This div with the ID payment element is where we mount this payment element where we can accept payment details. The way that that is mounted is using Stripe.js. So over in index.js, you can see that we're initializing a brand new instance of Stripe. Then we're making a fetch call or an Ajax call to our create payment intent endpoint, getting back a client secret. Next, we use that client secret to initialize a set of Stripe elements and we create a payment element component. After the form is submitted, we're gonna call stripe.confirmpayment and pass in that list of elements and some confirm params. This is how the sample works. If you're curious about how you set up and integrate the payment element, head over to the channel. We have tons of videos about how to set up and integrate the payment element. But for today, what I wanted to do was go through the process of adding link to an existing payment element integration. If we were to walk through the process, there's really no way to save our details yet. So the first step is we need to go back to the server. We're gonna scroll all the way to the top and the very first thing we need to do is because this is a beta, we're gonna specify the beta by adding to our API version link underscore beta equals V1. Then back inside of our create payment intent endpoint, we need to first change the currency to USD because link really only supports USD. Now, you'll notice that we have automatic payment methods enabled. This is a best practice. This means that your payment methods can be derived from your settings in the dashboard. However, if you are explicitly passing some list of payment method types, then in order to use link, we'll need to also pass link in addition to card or any other payment method types. I'm gonna use the automatic payment methods here because again, that is a best practice. We'll head back over to the index and here we're gonna add a container where we're gonna mount what's called an authentication element, the link authentication element. We'll start by giving it an ID of link authentication element and we're gonna add a header for the contact and for the payment section just so we can separate out and we'll be able to identify those elements easier when we're looking at the form. Now in index.js on the client, we also need to specify which betas we're using. Here again, we're gonna pass a list of string values, including link beta two. We also need to update the API version and pass in link beta is V1. All right, so right before we create our payment element, let's create a new element called a link authentication element. This is a brand new type of Stripe element. And the key here is that we need to pass in link authentication with this camel cased string. Then we're gonna call mount on that element, passing in the ID of the link authentication element div that we just created as the container for where this will exist. The link authentication element will display an email input field by default. And when a customer is returning to a business that accepts link, they will see this email input. Now, if we type into this email input, an email address that has never been seen by any business that uses link, 
then we'll notice that at the very bottom, we see this new checkbox that allows customers to opt in. It says check out faster using link with Stripe. We'll enter in some card details. And in this case, we will opt in to using link with Stripe. And you'll notice that we need to enter our phone number. This phone number allows us to send an SMS one-time code to the customer so they can authenticate again later for faster checkout. After we've submitted the payment, you can see that payment succeeded. We have the ID of the payment intent. We can head back over to the payment flow and again enter that same test email address for the new person at example.com. And now we get a checkout faster with link with Stripe and we can enter in any valid six digit code. There's a handful that we'll show for testing later, but this will allow us to really quickly check out with payment details that we've already used in the past. So those are the basics for setting up link with Stripe using the payment element integration. Now suppose you wanted access to the email address that was entered into that contact form. We can add an on change listener to the link authentication element that will say when we receive a change event, we can access the email address that was typed into the authentication element going through event.value.email. For now, we'll just console log that value out. We'll refresh the page, open up the console, and you can see now as I'm typing out the email address, it is updating and logging out to the console. So that event, that change event is firing on the authentication element for every single keystroke. This might be useful when you want to track the email address for a brand new customer. Now, alternatively, if you already know the customer's email address, then we can initialize this link authentication element passing in some default values, including the email address. Here we'll pass in my email address that way, when the page is reloaded, you can see the email address is already pre-populated and we've already sent the customer a one-time password that they can use to enter in and authenticate this future payment. Great, now we can see a previous payment method that I've already used. Otherwise, I could also create a brand new payment method if I wanted to. There are also several test values that you can use when checking out to see what the customer will see for various error states. So in this case, they may have provided an incorrect one-time code or a code that has expired, or finally a code that errors out because they have attempted to authenticate too many times. In which case we need to enter a brand new payment method and then we're redirected. So just as a quick recap, first we went to the server, we added that link beta header, we changed the currency to USD. If we weren't using automatic payment methods, we would pass in link as a, one of the payment method types. Next, we went to the front end, we added this container link authentication element this div that we can use to mount our authentication element. Then from index.js, we added our list of betas, including link beta two. We also updated the API version to include our beta. Then we created a link authentication element. We showed how you can pass in default values or listen for the on change event to get access to that email address. Thanks so much for watching. In the description of this video, we have instructions for how to get involved and how you might participate in the beta. If this is past the beta period and link is globally available, you won't need to pass all those beta flags, but the integration should be the same. We really appreciate your time and attention and would love your feedback. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.